start us off. Yeah, man. So I guess to start it off, and I hope I say this right, but how um how did you get the nickname? I know it's kind of in your heritage, but the Anisha Nabe name. How did that come about to be called like the kid in that nickname? Uh, Anisha Nabe kid. I got it from a family member just uh, growing up and uh, personality. You know, I uh, love the culture and uh, you know I'm originally just a kid at heart, dude. You know, just uh, having fun and uh, when I was younger, and then grow it into you know this fighting nickname and uh i was given that and i was also given cd3 so i just ran with them both you know and now we're here in 2023 and i'm telling you about the latest smackdown july 15th oh yeah how's the uh, how's camp going for that man i'm sore so it's good i'm sore as hell oh uh, there you go uh yeah and i hope also i know you we were text uh texting back and forth so i hope all is good uh in life man you're back and, and back and rolling yes thank you man and i appreciate yeah, of that. course yeah man Andrew, you got anything? Hey, Carl, where do you uh, currently train at? I'm in the academy under Greg Nelson in uh, Brooklyn Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Um, how did you – when did you get started in MMA? When – kind of what what made – what led you into starting in mixed martial arts? Wrestling, man. Uh, the story I have in wrestling and then uh, not accomplishing what I wanted to uh, – I was given an opportunity to go train with one of my first coaches in Michigan and uh, it was like a grappling tournament. So I won it and I'm outside going to the bathroom, taking a piss. This is in the country. And some guy was just like, man, uh, congratulations. Do you fight too? And I said, no. And my coach at the time said, it's not a bad idea if you want to train three more months and, you know, so you feel confident being in the cage and it's different. And I said, okay, you know, and uh, all this history. So I would say just the dedication of the lifestyle wrestling and uh, man, I wrote down on a piece of paper being a UFC champion when I was 18 and I still have that piece of paper and uh, man, July 15th, I get to make that uh, true and make my title run. And uh, David, you got anything to add on that? No, that's, that's awesome. Um, and do you know, I mean, do you know, how do you see that fight going? I guess versus Alex Munoz, I know that he's six and two, oh, and two in the UFC. Um, and I know y'all are about the same age. So how do you kind of size up compare to uh alex man i love the opportunity i love the fight i love the stylistic matchup it's mma versus uh the kid and uh man i see it going easily in my favor first round or taking all three rounds in uh in the perfect world i want his corner to throw in the goddamn towel just because i'm beating his ass so badly you know and take those uh bonuses and uh then go for that bmf title right after that there you go oh yeah i hope they keep that around for sure I know that it's it's kind of hard to keep keep around, but I always like guys that fit that bill. You know, I think it's perfect with Dustin, obviously, and Justin, but they definitely need to make that a thing and let more contenders get at it for sure. Right on. Who do you have winning that fight, Dustin Poirier? Or... I got Dustin. Dustin. Do you? I th- I think so too. Yeah, I, I um I like both guys, and I mean it's it's exactly what it is the BMF. So, I mean, I like – I mean, it's, it's perfect after the Jorge and the Nate thing. So, I mean, I think that's the perfect next fight that you make. So, Exactly. I thought the same. <laughs> Did you uh, train with Dustin at American Top Team? Didn't you used to train there? A lot. I was uh, I was in the camp for the Khabib in the back rooms. And uh, oh, wow. it was those details. It was good to hear those uh, conversations and that teaching. And, uh, man, uh, Dustin – and I think of myself too, it's just the last of the dying breed, you know, I watched him train and he trains hard, just how the original old school guys still train. And even on Sunday, he was running five miles for the five round title fight. And that's rare to see guys go over and abo- over and do more, you know, being around the gyms and stuff like that. People get that blue check mark and they just want to hang out at the goddamn pool and, uh, you know, check on their Tinder dates and stuff like that. But he's, uh, it was, uh, I'm very fortunate to be around real ones and, uh, man, He's a, he's a real one. So, uh, you know, kudos to him and the team for letting me be a part of that and the experience. So, you know, <clears throat> this is a little off topic, but I know you said you were at American top team. Were you there when Covington and Masvidal and all of them were having their, all that drama? No, I was there right before that when they're like, I, I watched them guys wear each other's clothes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. deep in, deep in it. I mean, I've been, uh, I've been around and uh, it's, what it is, it's uh, I'll tell you boys right now, it's this game will will do that to you if you know you'll be your real self when there's money on the table. So, you know, I, that's really Colby and uh, man, I'll respect him as but all because you know, like you know, when you put a man's family out there 
and he call and he fucking housed you and clothed you and fed you right uh just little bit shit you know so i couldn't imagine you know having a friend do that to me over over 50 g's you know i don't give yeah. a fuck you know that doesn't make sense to me but you know it whatever he has to do to make his bread man i don't knock anyone's hustle but you see people's true colors come out in death and when money's on the table so you know man uh yeah i remember seeing them guys taking pictures of them guys and they were wearing each other's clothes man yeah straight up that's, that's wild yeah because i still feel like i don't know if you like i guess the fans it's hard to is it an act or is it real you know what i mean i think it's a little bit of both i think he was is that fucking arrogant and but i also think he is uh you know he's, he plays it but i also think it's him too because you know at the end of the day like if you watch that fight when he's sitting there staring at him in the rounds right after the round was done and they're both squaring off again yeah Oh, like there's some real animosity because of what he's saying, bring it to the table. Like, man, you're going to expose this man behind the scenes only because he housed you and clothed you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now, now so, you know, it was the animosity there from the beginning, maybe, but we've seen what we've seen and the, and behind the scenes, man, I, like I said, I've seen the boys wear each other's fucking clothes. Yeah. I think, I think uh, commenting on that with the whole clothes thing, kind of going off of that. I saw, I saw that post too, I guess when they're about to fight when Colby posted the, who do, you, who do you wear your clothes with, right? Who do you share your clothes with as a man? Your brothers, right? Right, right, right. You know that's 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 what it was. That's crazy. Well, I think I think adding on that's what I was saying too. I think adding on to that, like he also posted that picture with the um girl too that housed them housed them both, which was kind of like you know it's one of those arguments I guess as fans like what's too far and what's not. And like, like you just said, he like he was clothing all that, and then he posted. He just didn't care at that point. So it's kind of wild to see see like how far I guess Colby was willing to go with the beef and I mean rightfully so it kind of led to the streets I guess but that's and that's uh that's not what I ever want to be known for man you know I want to fight and if uh if I have to fight my friend straight up we'll fight but I don't need to I mean I was brought up to no you don't you don't bring in children you don't bring in religion you don't bring in uh you know, if you want to be a two spirit or a gay person, you don't bring that up. And all other than that, man, yeah, uh, grandmas are good. You know, your wife, the cooking, whatever. Other than that, man, just I, I don't need to. I would never want to attack someone on religion, politics, or their children. You know, like the way you parent someone is your business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's ways to sell a fight without doing that stuff. I mean, there's definitely guys out there that do that. I just saw a pod, too, with um, George St. Pierre, and he kind of said, like, how people would go that far. But kind of like you said, he just was in the mindset, at the end of the day, I'm a fighter, um, and I'll get to fight them. There's no point in not uh, fighting them on the street and not getting paid for it. At the end of the day, like, I'm going to be, be able to settle the beef getting paid for it, and that's ultimately that's what's going to matter at the end of the day. Right, and uh, if that's how you have to sell a fight, man, I – I don't see you living long after the career is done, right? Like when you get done with the UFC and you go to Brazil, you probably won't come out alive. When you get done with the UFC and you're not relevant and you're walking around, you know, these people remember what you said. These people remember, like, you know, and uh, a street, a real street soldier will take your life for $50, you know? And then as we live in today, man, it, you know, it's bound to happen. So I never want to go on that route, man. I never want to be associated and I know it and I've been around the game and uh, man, it's just not me. I'll, I'll attack you just because my skills, I'll attack you just because I know in my heart who I am, you know, but other than that, man, you, you know, other than that, I guess we'll see when it comes to it, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, did, did you fight in PFL prior to UFC? Yeah. I fought Alejandro Flores. Uh, like a year and a half ago in August, and that was in Hollywood, Florida, and uh, I lost in the split decision. Got you. Yeah, and then you went on a regional scene after that, right? Like a couple of fights in Michigan, I think I read. Um, right. Collected snapped, a couple wins. Right, snapped off Justin James right after he got a, a 86 out of the UFC for his strap for the WXC strap in Michigan. <clears throat> Unanimous ass whooping. <laughs> and then uh, a couple months later, I uh, – finished a guy who hasn't been finished in Michigan and it just so happened the timing and signing with uh, my management company Ruby it was uh Joe Selecki was uh my UFC debut Joe Selecki Selecki's a stud I I personally think he probably that Jared Gordon fight could have probably won either way and then I know he beat Jim Miller so I mean that's for your first fight that's I mean that's heavy hands you know that's that's full full onslaught but it acted like I mean you didn't care I guess 
You were no, just I, happy to get the contract, right? I was, and I was excited for the challenge. I'll tell you boys this. I did not believe I was going to lose that fight, you know, and hats off to him for hand fighting, getting the back and uh, transition, how he did. Because I really, like, I seen the 10-second mark, and I and when he sank it in, I thought I was good just to go into the third. But, uh, man, he capitalized on it. So, you know, hats off to that guy. Yeah, I guess that's especially when you when you lose in that way. I mean, I'm sure that it was a huge, huge learning point for you going on in your UFC career. You know, it's instead of a loss, more of a lesson too. I mean, you probably learned from that. I'm sure. Oh yeah, you know, and uh, set up more drills. It's just uh, at that level, guys are elite at a very few things. So you know, more hand fighting drills, more live situations, and uh, we'll we'll run it back again. Oh yeah, cool. Andrew, Do you have any, you got anything? Uh, yeah, you have any other interests outside of mixed martial arts? Oh yeah. Uh, hunting and fishing. I like cooking. I just graduated from school. Uh, you know, and the sky's the limit. And honestly, maybe even Nickelodeon, you know, <laughs> maybe even MO, bro, you know, maybe Michael Jordan and uh, CD three MTV. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what did you just graduate? Uh, what degree? I got a degree in native American studies with a concentrate in law and history. Okay. Gotcha. And was that just something that you've always been passionate about? Obviously coming, uh, coming from that as a heritage or did you just, I mean, what was kind of the, I guess, thought process and getting that degree now in your thirties? COVID. When COVID. COVID hit, I wasn't in the UFC and most of the States were shutting down regional fights. And even in, I was scheduled to even go boxing and then they had to shut down. So, you know, making money and uh, you know, I had, I had credits. I've been had university credits already under my belt. So I went and just finished it up by the time COVID hit. So I wasn't really pressured not to go to school or to go to school. It was just uh, the opportunity presented itself during the COVID time. And everybody felt that. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, um, I feel you on that. Yeah. Cause I was in school during COVID and it was tough to do really anything at that time. I graduated undergrad and I was in chiropractic school for a little bit and it was just same thing, but at the same time, you know, it's, it was a good opportunity to kind of lock in on school. So. Right. You know, and I, I did the same. Gotcha. How did you, uh, I guess, how did you transition to uh, Minnesota and training over there at the academy? At this point or when I first started? Like just in general, I know you were originally in Florida and then you went, your, did you transition like to Minnesota slowly or was it kind of, how did that happen? Uh, when, so when I first started mixed martial arts, I was training in Michigan and uh, I knew that I had to go somewhere to train with, you know, real knowledge under me, you know, because where I come from, it was just a, uh, Midwest, some wrestlers, we would uh, rent out the college wrestling room and we just, you know, throw down and grapple. And then we go fight on the regional scene, you know, back in the day when like people were, uh, they'd line up people and they would pick, okay, you fight you, you fight you, you know, that's how you did it. And then as the game progressed and even Michigan came into regulations, um, I just knew there was a seriousness of real training and I knew there's a seriousness of uh, how to build a champion. So years ago, I came out to the Minnesota and it was the very first time I learned how to throw a, a correct elbow and defend a correct elbow. And then as the game progressed, I was offered to go to Alliance. I went to Alliance for a year and a half. And then, then I went to Florida. Then I went to Vegas. And then uh, nothing's wrong with anything. I just wanted to, at this point in my career with the wrestling, um, I wanted to see what Greg, how he's attacking the game. I wanted to see what Greg's notes are. Uh, fast forward, you know, another 10 years. And it's fabulous, man. Greg Nelson's one of the Yodas in the sport, hands down. He has forgotten more than most people know. So I'm very fortunate to be around the man. I'm very fortunate to learn from the man. And I'm very fortunate to have him in my corner. And going back to Minnesota, it was just a, it was a pure, it was a pure career choice. It was, I'm going to put my career in my hands and I want to go to the Midwest and I want to just run it up as much as I can. And I'll still go to other gyms and stuff like that, but I really want to see how far I can take this with, uh, you know, with my coach. Gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what other, uh, do you have any, I guess, any other fighters, maybe even from other promotions that are uh, training there currently? Oh yeah. You got, uh, John Castaneda. UFC, he just picked up a win. You got Mike Richmond over there, BKFC, fucking uh, Southpaw, dirty boxer, uh, nasty with the hands. And then because it's the Midwest and what has Greg built here, all of his black belts, man, are legit. So I couldn't even tell you. I mean, the names you wouldn't even recognize, but his talent and their guy, I'm telling you, these guys are vicious on the ground, you know, and they know, you know, and they know. And then obviously – his connection around here with wrestlers. You got guys that are coming in. I got a guy that was uh, on the Purdue team. There's Minnesota Gophers in there. 
So, you know, the, the room is not as big, but it is talented. And then this, you got guys uh, just moved in here from Bulgaria, you know, uh, tough guys around the world. So, like I said, it's a smaller atmosphere, but, you know, the talent is there for what you need. And it's not, oh, it's not getting too big just yet, but it's about to start growing because um, I just see it, man. I can see it. You know, everything goes in trends, right? Everybody wants to hang out at the pool. Now everybody wants to go snowboarding. <clears throat> Yeah, there, I mean, there seems to be – I mean, just because, like you said, there's a lot of killers. That's like – that's Big Ten wrestling you just uh, mentioned and, and people from different countries. I mean, it's killers. Like, a lot of these people don't know that just because they're not in the UFC doesn't mean you don't spar with killers. I mean, most UFC, even champions, spar with killers that you'll never know their names. So, You, you said it, man. I could name you, like, 170-pounders that no one would ever know, but I'm straight murderers, bro. You'll never know, <laughs> you know but straight murderers. <laughs> I, I, I got you mentioned uh, BKFC. What's your thoughts kind of on that? Just on the as a whole, as a promotion. Oh, it's it is what it is. I uh, I think it's good for other fighters that just like that kind of style of fighting. And uh, uh, what did it originate over in the UK? Like underground uh, underground bars, right? That's how they'd settle it. No time. <laughs> I, think <so. laughs> I think that is kind of cool. And then I used to think the slab league's cool. I think that's funny too. So who you know, it's uh, different strokes for different folks, man. You like MMA? Hell yeah! UFC is uh, top dog all day. Vegas is king. You like bare knuckles, man? Uh, you know, Florida or whatever they get down at, uh, go there. So as a whole, of combat sports and the trend of it, I like it. But UFC is is the top dog. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're for, for sure. I mean, I I didn't realize I didn't. I guess it started kind of three like three to five years ago. I don't even know. But I mean, I kind of started watching it this year as it got popular because we we were growing up UFC, MMA, other promotions, one Bellator. But I, I, I was impressed with, like, how fun it is to watch, like how you'll find yourself kind of not like UFC but kind of similar of, like, this is entertaining. I guess it's, like, the gruesome cuts and stuff of it, too. It's just kind of – it's kind of re renegade old gladiators. So that – like, uh, we had Houston Alexander on. He just had that big fight. And, man, that was, that was insane. Like, that was probably one of the best BKFC fights I've ever watched. So it is exciting. Something new. Hell, yeah. So who you got for this weekend? You have Oliveira or do you have Benil? That's a good point. I got Oliveira though. The same. Same here. Blonde hair Oliveira's back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he I saw the hair dial. I was like, oh no, this man. And he got the back piece tatted now. I was like, this guy, this guy's back. <laughs> he said he said he's coming for war, is what he said. Yeah, when they were scared about the cut, right? He was like, oh, I'm yeah. I'm in a war zone or whatever. Yeah. yeah <laughs> um, what about do you have Nunez winning? Definitely, yeah. easily. I think so too. Yeah, I think um, Oliveira. How do you how do you think he'll finish him, or do you think he'll finish him, or do you think it'll be a decision? No, I think uh, Darnoosh. Is that how you pronounce his name? I think, so. I think. Yeah, there's a couple different ways, but I think that's like I've heard it a couple different ways, but I think you're right. I think he gets. I think Oliveira finishes him on the ground. You know, I think both the guys are tough in the striking era. But I think Oliveira is just that dog on the ground. You know, he can catch him and he can wrestle him and then catch him that way too. Not saying either, either guy's a slouch, you know, at this level, but I just feel that Oliveira's, uh, you know, he's just that guy on the ground, man. Yeah, I've I seen a couple. Uh, I was watching some of the Benil highlights. That man moves forward, though, like on up top striking. I was like, man, he, he takes some punches. He walks forward and gets to his wrestling. But it is tough when you got somebody like Oliveira with the – with the Brazilian jiu-jitsu that where if you do get hurt and you need to go on the ground, it's dangerous there too. So that's kind of my thought process too. And you've seen how we just did against a guy that was coming forward and a wrestler, Chandler. You see what he did to Chandler. Right, yeah. That's why I say, yeah, that's scary. It's scary stuff. And that's why I thought it was so elite when Islam did what he did. I was like, dude, that is insane when Islam was able to do what he did. Right, that, that I thought it was going to go more than that, but that was insane. Well, that's kind of the same thing like you're saying. They probably got so many killers in Dagestan that we don't even know. We know a lot of killers on the scene here, but they probably got so many, many killers <laughs> back there in Dagestan. I can only imagine. Like, you sure. should go out there for like three or four weeks. <laughs> I don't even know. They, I don't know, man. I'm native, dog. They might fucking hold me hostage. In my <laughs> <laughs> that's true, too. You know? <laughs> Just uh, get, in, get in with Hasbulla. You'll probably, you'll probably yeah, be right. good. Yeah, you'll be good. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happened with the main event? Didn't uh, Juliana Pena, did she get hurt? What, what happened with that? Yeah, I think she did. Because she was supposed to fight for the trilogy, I think. Yeah, well, which I, yeah, she was originally supposed to fight Nunez, I guess, up to like, what, a month ago. But 
I mean, I saw that fight kind of ending probably even more dominant than the second fight. <laughs> right, right. It's just hard. I mean, yeah, it's just hard to beat somebody like that. Like when you got a John Jones, Amanda, somebody like that, it's hard to it's hard to get them twice. I mean, it just is. Definitely. Respects. Definitely, man. Is there anything you'd like to add? Man, this has been a long time coming. July 15th, I'm excited to show out. I'm excited to, uh, you know, put my skills to the test. This is the, very, this is the very best Carl Deaton coming forward. And, you know, just thank, thank you guys, pound for pound, this uh, podcast. Thanks to everyone that's reached out to me thus far. My, uh, my family, number one, and the supporters, number two, and the gym, obviously, you know, and management company, thanks to the UFC for this opportunity because, you know, they can do whatever they want to the kid, you know. It is what it is. So, you know, moving forward, man. Uh, may all the gods bless America and tune in to July 15th and watch this ass open. I'm about to finish Alex Munoz with ease. Hell yeah, man. We're excited, man. Well, we're, we're rooting for you. And again, yeah, appreciate you coming on and uh, chill, man.